I'm Lara Robinson and I'm a professional painter and this is my studio. So I got into art because my grandfather at a young age took me out painting. He was an architect and he was always drawing and painting. Um, and I think I was about seven and I kept nagging him and one day he did take me out landscape painting and I was honestly hooked ever since. This is a small sort of sketch piece that I'm currently working on. Um, it's not finished at the moment, a massive mess. And as you can see, I make a lot of mess around the um, canvas as well when I'm trying to play with colour or um, quantity of paint on a paintbrush. But this here is the start of me researching and exploring the idea of bar scenes and party scenes in London. I thought this was a really cool image of this girl with balloons in the party you know, zone. So I sort of generally start with smaller paintings and then I get bigger as I progress with the idea. Um, but this is a work in progress. My favorite thing to paint, it changes day by day. I often find I want to paint what I'm not painting. So if I'm, let's say, doing a portrait commission and I'm spending months on it, um, I then miss painting figures, landscapes, still life. But in my past shows, when I've done a lot of landscapes, I always miss painting people. So um, I would say day by day, it does change. I divide my week up between commissions, which is my bread and butter. Um, so I spend half the week on commissions, and that's obviously someone um, asking me to do a painting of their chosen subject matter. And then I spend the other half of my week on my inspiration and the series of work I'm doing at that time. Um, so this palette here was the first mega palette that I ever bought. It was my first year in Florence at the traditional art school. On the first week and probably the second day, they took us to this famous art store called Zeki's, where it's like a sweet shop for kids, for us artists. It's just unbelievable, it's incredible. So when we got our palettes, um, it was almost like going to the Harry Potter one shop. I remember picking out the palette and I almost feel like that that was our broom and then obviously the paint brushes that we chose were like our ones these are our magic tools and forever they will be so very very special indeed <laughs> When you start painting on the traditional course, you only start with five colours, which is a limited palette. So they take you through those, those colours of the oil paints that you're meant to paint with, and you get those. They also advise you on the brushes to get. And then the most exciting thing is the palette. This palette was sort of designed on weight because you want it to sort of fall back slightly so when you're painting it doesn't, the paints don't get in the way. Um, so it's weighted specifically and you put your mediums at the end um, and then you obviously put your colours out like that. So when you're mixing, it all becomes very natural and easy. So it is designed in a specific way. And we bought these and we had to oil them out for about a month before we could use them. And finally, the first day we could use them was obviously very exciting. And I've had it ever since and hopefully I'll have it for life. <laughs> so this is my grandfather. I love this painting because I did a commission for him, a portrait of him. This was almost a study just to sort of um, gauge his character and um, also play with again accents and um, brush strokes and I left it unfinished and I almost prefer it the fact that it's unfinished and it's sort of abstract but it gives that sense of his character just straight away less is more so I just love this painting and um, it's just a reminder of playing and the fact that you don't always have to finish painting in order for everyone else to call it finished um, it's just a good reminder of the fact that we can play as artists. The hardest thing to paint, I maybe would say portraits because um, obviously me as the painter um, has have an idea of how I want to paint someone, but the viewer always has um, a specific idea of how they want to be painted. And obviously you want to keep them happy. So you've got to sort of balance what you see in that person with also what they want from the portrait. It's always a challenge, but it's always um, a really good challenge. And I love painting people, so. When I was at art school, they wouldn't pass you on your painting project until you had shown them what you had learned and what they were trying to teach you. And I remember doing this massive cast drawing, black and white, it was a sculpture. 
and I think I probably spent about eight months on it and they would not pass me because obviously I wasn't showing them something that they were really trying to teach me. And I remember at the time, I think I cried a few times whilst doing it. Um, and I also just would not understand why they wouldn't pass me. But now looking back, I really know why they didn't. And I'm so grateful that they pushed me and pushed me. Um, and I learned a lot. So this piece here is Golden Sunset on Travaux's head. So again, this is a Cornwall painting. For me, it's very special because I grew up here and the view from this point is just beautiful. And one evening I came here and the light was just incredible. No matter what the weather is like in Cornwall, we always get incredible sunsets. And this golden sunset was just so epic. And so I took a photo. I have obviously over-exaggerated the color slightly. Um, I was trying to see what I could get away with. Um, by being sort of very simple, um, but capturing that, that moment of the sunset and the golden beauty um, in that moment. Um, and so yeah, that's the result I got. <laughs> I think art is important because it allows people, well, the world to see in different ways. Um, I mean, take me for ex example, I'm an artist and I paint something I see that I think is beautiful, but it's my interpretation. So when it's on show, it allows viewers to see um, something maybe in a different light, but it also allows you know, creators the chance to express themselves. When you're a painter yourself or doing the actual craft, it takes you to a whole different world and you totally think about just the painting. Um, so let's say everyday stresses, you can just totally forget about those. So I'd say almost it's, it's like therapy as well. What do you listen to when you're painting? What do you prefer silence? Oh God, no, I always listen to something. I generally listen to podcasts. Um, on a Friday, I like to listen to music because it's a Friday and gets me in the weekend mode. Um, but generally speaking, I listen to podcasts and that can range from um, co comedians or sort of um, audio books, um, you know, a whole variety of different things. Do you have a favorite podcast? Um, currently I do. I love the um, Abby Clancy and Peter Crouch podcast. <laughs> Um, they make me laugh a lot and it's just nice, easy listening to, especially when I'm painting something quite um, intense. Um, it's quite nice to just have that on and um, you know, something not too intense to listen to is always good when you are concentrating. In five years time, I see myself, uh, well, I would just love to be bigger and better and also really well known for my craft. Um, obviously as artists, we're always fighting, but I would say it's a sort of step-by-step -step process. Um, I just want to be known to be good for painting. That is my biggest goal. And the more people that know that, the happier I will be. I love most about being an artist is the fact that I'm always learning. Um, the more I learn, the more I realize there is to learn and the more I realize I do not know. So I guess in that respect, um, it would never get boring and I think I will be painting until until my grave. The sort of bigger I get or the more I do, I get hungrier to learn more. So it's addictive. Um, I go to bed thinking about it and I wake up thinking about it. My style in um, three words, I would say colourful, maybe impressionistic, yet also maybe classic. Yes, feedback is always hugely appreciative, whether it's good or bad, because once again, you're learning from it. Um, I actually keep any email or any message or any video or photo that people have sent me when they've received my work, um, I always keep because you often have down moments as artists. So sometimes I like to go back to those and read them. And um, that I guess is so special about being an artist is when you read those emails and hear how much joy just one painting has given someone. That's incredibly special. The commission I did for my grandpa was obviously incredibly special. Um, he actually commissioned me to do that about six months before he died. And he was captain of this golf club and now the painting has gone up in the golf club because they have portraits of all the captains there. Um, so that was a very special painting, obviously for me, because it was someone I loved, but um, the timing just was amazing how 
um, sort of I managed to finish it when he was still alive so that was incredibly special. I get commissions to do um, people's birthdays, people's 60ths. It's always quite fun when um, a partner has commissioned me and they're giving it to their other half and we're always trying to sort of email back and forth without ruining the surprise. Um, but those are always quite fun when, when it's been delivered and the reveal happens and they're always sort of pleasantly surprised which is fun. <laughs> so I obviously use a palette with paints on and my brushes over here. Um, so these are all my lovely brushes and definitely um, every week it changes as to what my favourite brush is. Um, currently I'm loving these sort of synthetic brushes because they're so bouncy and um, there are a lot of Da Vinci, um, the make, and also Rossetti as well brushes. Um, and they're all just so nice and springy and allow me to be quite impressionistic. And then over here, I have my bucket of paints. Um, so here, I just shove all my different paints in here. And definitely, I have favorite colors. You can see um, within my paintings that I like a lot of these pink colors, which is quite fun. And blue is pleasurable to look at, so I do love love all this and obviously my lovely palette I use and then we have these um, palette knives here um, and this is very good for sort of applying paint but also to like scrape away a colour and put it back on it's just very useful so um, I use this a lot especially when I'm painting outside as well. Um, I would say I, I vary the paints. Windsor & Newton is always a good standard one. Michael Harding is a really really love. They do really rich lovely colours um, so I chop and change. If I use a colour a lot I invest in it and get the nice rich ones but if I'm sort of not um, as attracted to that colour I sort of would go for a, you know, a less expensive make but I chop and change. <laughs> So these paintings here are all little sketches. I often, when I start a big painting, I do smaller sketches to begin with. So this was back when I did a big portrait commission of this lovely lady. Um, I did a sort of sketch and the idea is just to get the right colours, to make sure it works as a composition. Then once I'm, I'm happy, I then start the big thing. That's the same again with this one. And these sketches actually just took sort of a couple of hours. And often I find that sometimes the sketches are just a lot more loose than the big, the big ones. So I always quite like to keep them and use them um, for examples and to help me with my future work. When I'm painting, it sort of depends how well the painting is going, but constantly when I'm in, a, in the zone and really, really focused, I'm constantly thinking of colour balance, temperature balance. Um, I'm also thinking of how I can get the painting to work and connect as a whole. That's sort of going through your brain the whole time. Also, if you're working on people, um, proportion is incredibly important. So you're just sort of going around the painting constantly thinking duh, duh, duh. So your mind is going, going. Oil painting is different to acrylic and watercolour because you don't use water at all. Oil paints dry very slowly, so it allows us artists to work on a painting for a long period of time. Both watercolour and acrylic dry within a couple of hours. So if you are working on acrylic and watercolour, um, generally you finish the painting quite quickly, um, but oil paintings stay wet and you can rework them, you can scrape it off, you can layer, you can mix paints very well. And it's just got that lovely, like thick texture. So again, you can paint quite thinly to begin with and then layer and layer and make the painting quite impasto-like. Um, it just allows the painter to use a lot of different techniques within a painting, which is quite fun. So what does the average day in the life of your sort of art studio day look like? I am in the studio every day, five days a week. Um, so I would wake up and then I would get to the studio. First things first, coffee, always need that. I then probably spend about an hour doing all the boring sort of admin work um, because I can then focus on a painting and not have to worry about 
um, you know, that side of the, of the work. Um, so I probably start painting at about 10. I then paint through until lunch, stop for a little lunch. And in my studio I have, there's a lot of other artists in, in this wonderful studio. Um, so it is quite nice to chat to them and talk about sort of you know, the art world. We have furniture designers, silversmiths. Um, so it's quite fun to talk to them about what they're doing. I then go back to painting and stop at tea time for a cup of tea and biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I paint till about 6 p.m. and by that time I am quite tired so it's always good to stop because if you continue painting well if I continue painting until late I often find myself ruining the, the day's work so it's always good to stop at about six for me. Mm -hmm.